All right. Well, welcome to floor two. I think we're on. Um, my name is Becky Colling. I am in Southern California, and I've been a trainer since not very long. I guess about a year now. Um, I got it like right before pandemic time, right around pandemic time, I, by the when it started. Um, and it's been an adventure, but it's been a lot of fun. So I'm excited today to talk with you all about event selection. You're welcome to stay on the whole time. You're welcome to jump in and ask questions, um, or you can just sit and listen to me and then hop off. But I do want to share resources with you. So the first thing I'm going to share is the wakelet that I put together around selecting your event. Because when you fill out the application, it's similar to like a case study. They, they want to hear about past trainings that you've given. And there are some spe uh, specifics about the past trainings that you've given. So as far as event selection goes, they want to know about your five most recent trainings. Um, and the case study will only be based off of one of those. So you'll list five, but then you'll only talk about one. And with those five, one question that's come up quite a bit is, um, does it have to be around training on a Google tool? The answer is yes and no. Um, yes, it should be something Google, but you absolutely don't have to do a training on like Intro to Google Classroom. For me, I'm not going to give a training on Intro to Google Classroom right now because none of the teachers in my district need that. So instead, I might give a training on integrating Edpuzzle into your Google Classroom. So we're going to talk about Edpuzzle. We're going to talk about the benefits of engaging students, utilizing a platform that allows more access for them, right? So we might talk more about that. And we're going to bring in those Google for EDU tools instead of saying, Intro to Google Docs, we're going to instead integrate that into the training we're given, giving, just as long as we do mention it. Um, I, I've spoken with a few others who maybe did an entire training on Flipgrid, and that didn't count for the application. But if they had integrated the two and talked about the integration, it would have counted. So just make sure you have five trainings that you've done and your case study is only focused on one of those five. And um, let's see. Uh, we have our norms in here. I'm not going to read through those. Like I said, if you have questions, just jump in throughout. I did also in the wakelet put a link to the teacher center. So if you're not sure where to go, that's in here. As far as the training format, it can really be any format. It does not have to be face to face. And it also uh, doesn't have to be 50 people or 20 people. You can do one on one training. Now, what I recommend is don't do five one-on-one -on -one trainings because your case study, remember, is only based off of one of those. And so your feedback would only be from one person. As a trainer, we want to show that we've got that growth mindset, that we're willing to learn and take uh, our feedback and use it towards a later session. So if we only have feedback from one person, that's not great data. My recommendation for your feedback, try to have you know a solid 10, 15, 20 people, but your other sessions, maybe one of them you have one person, one of them you have 20 people, one you have four people. You know, um, it can be any variety. It can be face-to-face, -face, it can be fully virtual, it can be um, uh, really any format that works for you and for the teachers that you're supporting. It also does not have to be within your district. So if you're trying to find ways to give your training, reach out to your local GEG and say, hey, I've got a great session I'd like to give or I'm applying for trainer. Could I do a 30 minute session? Um, and I'm sure almost all of them would be all over that. Absolutely. And if they're not, reach out to GEG SoCal and I definitely have you come present anytime <laughs> to get those trainings in. Uh, so there's not like a, a set requirement for what the format looks like and put them all in there just in case. And then as far as the training material, this was from the, the training that Google provided. So this next link in here was from that training. And I'm going to open this one up. This is just a template. You by no means have to follow this, but it is nice to give you kind of a, a flow for what you need to do when setting up your training if you've not given one before. So as you're planning your session, 
really going through each of the different components, making sure that if you are utilizing Google branding, that you're using the correct Google branding, I should bring in their new branding material. Um, I'll add that to the wakelet later. It's not end of the world, but it is best practice that if we are going to utilize their branding, we, we utilize the correct um, branding. Um, and I'm guessing what they have in here is old. I'll, I'll double check that right after this. I apologize for that. I'll double check that. Then the next thing we have in here is an example of an agenda. You are definitely welcome to copy this agenda as well. Follow the agenda, switch it out for the content that you're providing. And then we have uh, design slides for differentiation, making sure that we're meeting the different needs of our, our learners. In this case, it's going to be adult educators that you're training. And I put in here the example of the training that I did my case study on. Mine was getting started with Google Classroom. Um, because like I said, I got mine right at like COVID start time. So mine was on Google Classroom. So I did put my example in there if you wanted to see what my training deck looked like. Um, when it comes to sharing a resource within the application, they're going to ask you to share a resource from your case study. Do not share your video. So if you record your hour long session, don't share the link to your hour long session. You have to keep in mind someone's got to read through all the applications and they're not going to watch an hour long session. Uh, they might watch two minutes of it. Uh, so I would share something like my slide deck to show, yes, I had something put together. That's why I put that in here for you. And then the feedback. The feedback's a big one because uh, the feedback, again, is part of your case study and they want to know from your feedback, what did you gain? Where are you going to go next with this? So for me, it's all about asking the teachers that I'm working with, what was the most impactful? What do you need more support on? Um, and the example that's in here is from the training. I actually recommend utilizing that. I don't believe in recreating the wheel. If that's the one that they want to see, I'm going to use it. And I'm just going to change the title so you can make a copy of that and use it. And then as far as extra support, just making sure um, nothing in here is too novel or exciting, but making sure that you're giving a training that's beneficial for the teachers and you're not just giving a training for the sake of giving it to get your trainer application. So make sure there's some benefit to you and to the teachers. And then down below, I added in here it's not perfect, but I added in here my application, example, questions, and responses. So you can actually see what I submitted when I submitted my application. But other than that, the selecting your session is all about just making sure that it is meaningful for the teachers, it's more than one person for your case study, and you've got a nice variety. But I'm gonna open it up for any questions that you all have. And I know it's short and sweet, but it's it's the purpose of selecting sessions is not to be a trick. They're not trying to like trick you and be like, oh, you didn't give a session on Google Docs. Forms would be an interesting one because forms are changing and forms are always fun, but you also don't have to become an expert in forms and give a session on that. Any questions? And Danielle, I'm going to share the link in here to this collection again. It's just a Wakelet collection um, around some of the key takeaways when you're selecting your session. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. So, Becky, I've already submitted my application and I wish I had seen all of this before I had done. So, I mean, if I don't get through this stage, I'll definitely be coming back and having a look at this. I I did my session on um, Jamboard. And, Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we've been using that quite a bit. So um, and we'll see how it goes. I just submitted it on Wednesday past, so um, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's great to see what you have done there. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm yeah. it's going to go okay. Yeah, and for the um, resource, the, um, for the training resource, I had put together some videos and um, just, I suppose, like a series of training videos, a slow and steady series and then a fast track series in the hope that that might show, you know, and then afterwards I was thinking, goodness, I didn't put in um, 
like a slide deck, you know, to show the stages. So there's always that we worry, you know, have I done enough? So it'll be interesting to see, sure. And if I don't get through, then I can tell everybody about the experience of not getting through. <laughs> so what's interesting, and I'm glad you bring that up too, if you don't get through, and I don't think this was ever made clear to me when I initially applied, if you don't get through, it's not like they respond and say, nope, you weren't accepted, goodbye. Um, they let you know why, typically. And then you just resubmit whatever was missing. So if for whatever reason they were like, we wanted to see a resource and not a video collection, then you would just switch mm -hmm. that out and hit resubmit. So it's not that intimidating. And please, if you, if anyone, and I'm sure Danielle, you're going to be fine. I'm sure all of you are. But if you don't get through, don't give up. <laughs> like just, mm -hmm. just resubmit. And if there's anything you're worried about or you want to be looked at, share it out with any of us. Uh, I've had quite a few people just in the last few weeks sending me their videos and sending me their resources and asking me to look it over. Most of them send it through Twitter DM. I'm happy to look them over. Uh, it's three minutes. I don't mind. I I don't analyze it for an hour, but I look for three minutes and I'll say, oh, I might want to do this or music's too loud. I know this session's not on or this room isn't for videos, but most common mistake is the music is too loud and the videos are too long. So um, those are things to keep in mind. But honestly, it's a process and the application isn't meant to be you're in and you're not. It's meant to be a growing experience. So if I were to apply now, I would submit something completely different than what I did a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you'll, you'll be great. And you did yours on Jamboard. What was your focus in Jamboard? Was it an intro, intermediate? Um, yeah, it was using Jamboard with live lessons to be able to ensure the pupils were collaborative and that you could give live feedback as they were working in the same Jamboard, you know, so it was it was really focused on that. You know, that's what we've been doing with um, the teachers at the moment in our school. It's really bringing along the, you know, the Google Meets to make sure that all the pupils are engaging in the Google Meets and watching as they are engaged. And so really that was the focus of the Jamboard, using that tool um, to give live feedback while the pupils were working on tasks. So I don't know if that's going to be challenging enough because in the video, didn't they say they wanted to see an advanced use of the tool? So I'm worried about that as well, but time will tell. <laughs> no, um, so that's another great point you bring up. That's spot on with what you, what you should be showcasing if that's where teachers need support first off those are the trainings you give um and those what you're doing right there that's advanced features of the tool basic features of jamboard is opening a jamboard and just writing on it but that collaborative feature and providing feedback and being able to utilize it in a live session um it, it takes it to the next level so i think that's just fine and for my video no joke, the tool I featured was how to set up office hours in Google Calendar. Because they said I had two minutes. I like yeah. to talk a lot. And I was like, <laughs> what can I showcase you in two minutes? I can't show you how to set up a whole classroom. So you really, for your video, you do want to pick something where you can be like, in two minutes, you will understand this. They just want to see that you can explain something in two minutes. They don't want to see that you show someone how to set up an entire classroom, that you show someone how to format an entire sheet. Like if you're going to do something in sheets, they instead want you to show how to set up a conditional format. That would be it type of thing. So I, when I say my tool that I showcased in my video was how to set up office hours, that was it. It wasn't even fancy office hours. It was go into calendar. You're going to click here. Pick your time, you're gonna click here. <laughs> I mean, it was so basic. Where now I laugh, but I'm like, that's what they wanted to see. Can I show, mm -hmm. can I teach someone in two minutes? So I, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, any other questions about event selection or just anything? Honestly, I'm open to all questions. Becky. Yeah. Earlier in the fall, um, I, somebody had posted on the global gag um, question and answer thing about, you know, what kind of events could you use? And especially now that we have all the COVID, there aren't as many conferences and things like that going on. Well, they and somebody answered and said that 
except for the one you did your case study on, you could do posting uh, video trainings and to use instead of live training. Can you give us, is that real? Is that true? Or is something else preferable and help us with that? Yeah, so I, that's a tricky one. Posting a video, unless you've got data to back it, I would be a little cautious on it. I think you would probably be fine because in YouTube we can see how many people have watched it and that's what we're doing our trainings. A lot of my trainings right now is easier if I can be like, go watch this video. Um, but most of my videos are five minutes so I wouldn't count those as a training. If you're doing it live and they're watching it afterwards, that, that could work. I'm not 100% sure on I would say if you can avoid it, I would, but I also don't, I'm being recorded right now. I would also <laughs> say, I don't think anyone's going back to check your calendar and be like, did you do this in person or did you do this in video? Because the reality is, and I can actually open up my application. Obviously I'm not saying like make up your sessions, but when you're putting your other four sessions in here, oh goodness, let's, zoom in really quick you're putting them in as did I just put the sessions and not I just did my case study one I could probably sign in and find it you're legit just putting in the title of the session I think the date and that's it okay for your other four. So, and I mean so yeah, if you're doing a video, an hour long video, you're putting in just as much prep as if you're doing it face to face. So you're probably fine. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question or really just thought about it, but <laughs> you got to hear my thinking. Any other questions? Becky, can I ask, um, in terms of choosing your event to use as your, your case study, your, your featured one, would it, obviously it's better to use a medium size or a bigger group rather than a, a you know, group of five or a one-on-one -on -one or something like that because of being able to assess that feedback and gain that feedback, is that right? Yeah, yeah, you want to be able to look at the feedback. So don't, if you have... Let's say you have two sessions you gave and they both had between 15 to 20 people and one of them, all of your feedback came in and it was perfect. And then the other one, your feedback came in and you got some mixed messages, like some things weren't super clear or people needed more support. My recommendation is to go with the latter. Pick the one mm -hmm. where they needed more support. I say that because it's a case study. They, Google is not looking for the perfect trainer they're looking for the growth mindset trainer and so yes. if you can say based on my feedback here's what i would do different here's what i need to follow up on because you have to say what you're going to follow up on if yes. your training was so perfect and there's no follow-up necessary that question is hard to answer so in mine i didn't differentiate enough for teachers and that's a big thing like i expected you were all coming into my session with that same understanding that you had no idea how to use Google Classroom. But then the reality was like half of them did and they were bored out of their mind for an hour and a half. Um, I mean, it was my entire district had to go through the training. So 400 teachers, uh, yes. but that was a huge learning curve for me. And I showcased that and I talked about that, how yes. I should have differentiated and what I would do next time if I had to train 400 teachers on intro to Google Classroom. I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So I would pick the one that's gonna give you more to write about versus the, the perfect one and definitely pick a larger subgroup so you have more data. Great, that's awesome, thank you. Yeah, and with my feedback too, uh, just so you all know, I use the same form for every training I do in my district. I don't make a new form. Instead, they, they pick the session because for me, I want that. That was okay to use because I highlighted the specific session from my case study. I highlighted that data. I didn't delete it because I still wanted it. So that's another recommendation. Um, if you do use the same form for every training, just be sure to highlight the section of 
your data that you're going to showcase in your case study. Um, but if you use a new form every time, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, form. Make sure everything is visible. Make sure that you give view access to everything. All of my stuff was in my district domain, and my district domain does not allow me to share with anyone outside of my district domain. Uh, or I can't make it view view access for anyone outside. So I ended up having to uh, basically put it all into my personal and then give that view access. But that is a big issue that they run into with applications is that they can't even view the material. And if you're ever worried, just go back and check your stuff you put on your application and see the view access. So. <laughs> That's Are you reading my name right now? I am. I saw the look on your face. I was like, if you're worried, just go check it right now. They haven't looked yet. You're fine. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at I put my video on YouTube on Listed, and I keep refreshing the views to see, has it been looked at yet? Has it been looked at? I did the same thing. I did the exact same thing. Um, how funny is that? Yeah. And the videos, they don't have to be perfect quality. I mean, mine was me sitting on my bed. I tried to make it look like I wasn't sitting on my bed, but that was the reality of where I was at at the time. <laughs> uh, and it was it was great. It was more about the content and personality. They wanna they wanna see you. They don't wanna hear a minute long list of all of your accolades. And more like, what makes you googly? Tough question to answer, but it does hold a lot of value. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It took about 300 texts. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you need to know how to edit videos. That definitely helps. <laughs> so I, I like that you say that. For me, I did not know how to when I created mine. And so I honestly, like, did it all in one shot. Went into a Google Meet, recorded myself for three minutes, <laughs> and it <laughs> ended. I was like, that's my video. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it would be so much different today, um, or so very different today. But maybe it's good that it wasn't today. Yeah, I agonized over it too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, just show more personality and don't Google or don't go on YouTube and look up trainer videos. Oh, boy, that was a mistake. Uh, the ones that pop up on YouTube are, like, I'm going to say your edu-famous friends who – have been video editing for years and years. And I was like, this is Disney quality. <laughs> I don't even know if they got in, but they better have because this is amazing. And I can't, I don't have a green screen and I don't, I didn't know how to app smash at the time and all of that. And so don't, just take my word for it. Do not YouTube trainer videos. Be you, keep it three minutes, follow the rules. They will love you all. They will. So. I, I had fun with it. Um, yeah, I, I did not... Google them. Yeah, <laughs> I did Google them. And I saw someone had in this um, brilliant Google Earth image. So, of course, I had to put that in. So now I'm zooming into Ireland. <laughs> okay, I watched that <laughs> same one. I know. Cringe. I just cringe thinking of it. <laughs> I know exactly which one you're talking about yes. because I watched that same one. And I Googled how to do that for the longest time that I was like, stop. <laughs> It was a waste of time. It was a complete waste of time. Yeah. I should, but it's I should so have cool. now you know. stuck to it. Yes, now you know. Yeah. It's a learning curve. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I did put my Twitter in there. If you are on Twitter and you do create your video, I'll also add my email in here just because uh, I don't mind. If you do want me to look over your video or any of your content, reach out. I, I'll. I'm faster with responding to a Twitter DM than email. Even though I've got my email filters all in there and all set, I just get 5,000 a day. Uh, so I schedule once a week to go through and really clean it out. It's been a few weeks. Work email's different, but uh, Twitter's <laughs> faster. All right, I think. But yeah, anything else? I'm gonna check to see. I'm not sure how long. She said about 30 minutes. 
That's great, Vicky. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's yeah. that's really made it very clear. Good.